Charlie, what? Oh, Charlie, Charlie. Charlie, what about Charlie? He's jumped into the lake and swam up past the boat. He hasn't come back. Do you know? 
know you are the only woman that Ed ever loved. He just wanted to give you something to hold on to. No, no, I don't think so. I don't think that's what he meant. He sounded as if he never expected to see me again. Oh, come on, come on. That's silly. Honey, if Ed really thought that, he'd never let you know. That's right. He wouldn't burden you down with that. Uh, Jim is absolutely right. Carla, Ed is a strong man. And he's got Jack Scott as his surgeon. You know, he's one of the best. Uh, he's extremely talented. Carla, uh, are you listening? What? Scott is a very capable man, dear. Now, any, any complications that might come up, I'm sure he'll be able to handle what if it's too late? What if there's too much damage? That's what everyone was afraid of when I was on the operating table. And what seemed hopeless has turned out just fine. Let, let me remind you of something else. You remember, right after we started working together, you used to come into my office and plague me with admonitions. Prove that, Dr. Craig. How do you know that, Dr. Craig? What do you base that on, Dr. Craig? Remember? And now it's my turn. It's my turn to ask you what you're basing your fears on. Carla? Mm -hmm. You brought me down to earth as usual. <laughs> Vicky, I ain't got no choice. He took you away from me. No, that's not true. You don't understand. I, I understand this. I have always loved you and provided for you. And the Lord knows. He knows that it wasn't my fault. That my son hurt you and disrespected you the way he did. And I punished him for it, didn't I? I took your side against my own flesh and blood.
just about to assume his new position and all this happened. Wow. What are you doing over there? Just double checking. This thing wasn't acting quite right a minute ago. You did say it was Dr. Scott, didn't you? That's right. Yeah, well, maybe I better triple check. I don't want him on my back like the last time. Okay, Lieutenant Hall. We're going to get this over with as fast as possible. Can you hear me? That's it. I keep your spirits up. You got this whole town pulling for you, I can tell you that. Isn't that convenient? 
Yeah, it sure is. Uh, Lorraine? Mm -hmm. Well, looking at a couple other apartments, you know. Well, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, after all, I live here. Right. Oh, Paul. Hey, you're so good at the reason. I didn't know if you'd left or not. No. Hello, Lorraine. Hello, Edwina. You know our prospective new neighbor? Oh, yes. Paul and I work together at the Lord Press. It is. How nice for you. Yes, it is. So I just got a call from the city desk, and Paul and I have a lot to talk over, so if you'll excuse us, Lorraine. I was, uh, nice meeting you, Lorraine, and, uh, I'll remember about the house plants and the decorating. Please do. And, um, also remember that, um, if you have a cup, I have the sugar. Okay. Uh -oh. Yuck! <laughs> That's some welcoming committee. Look, I hope she hasn't put you off the idea of taking the apartment. Well, you just put strong locks on the door. Somehow, I don't think that's going to be enough. Oh, no, no. Lorraine is definitely available. <laughs> Endlessly. And there's so much so that I wonder why she has to go around pointing it out. <laughs> Although, maybe I'm assuming too much. About what? Perhaps you like to start? Oh, well, you know me. I'm pretty old-fashioned about these things. What does that mean, Paul? Well, that means I only worry about a woman's availability after I've met her and liked her, and I think that she feels the same way about me. That's quite unusual for a man. What can I tell you? Yes, most men will just follow their instincts in a situation like this and ask questions after. Well, I guess I'm just different. I'd say you were sensible and mature. Hmm. Hey, did you really get a call from the desk, or are you just saying that to get me out of the clutches of a good neighbor? Well, both. It's not good news, Paul. Well, what, what is it? Ed Hall has been shot. He's in critical condition. What? What happened? Well, Luke Jackson was apprehended by Ed, and there was an exchange of fire. And we had, come on, let's go to the hospital. Well, of course. Listen, the building, our manager's waiting to see Don't worry about him. Go wait. <laughs>
Okay, well, listen up, everybody. We have extensive damage to the upper lobe of the right lung. To repair that damage, I'll remove the fifth rib. However, I won't know how much or how extensive that damage is until I get in there. The bullet, Dr. Scott? Unless it's staring me right in the face, I'm not going to go hunting for it. Now, once the chest is open, I'll need plenty of suction and a dry field so that I can see what I'm doing. So let's keep alert and move fast. You'll keep me informed as to the blood pressure. Every step of the way. And how are we now? Where we were and stable. And the blood gases? Normal. Okay, let's do it. Scalpel. Yes, sir. operating on air. No, I don't think I've ever seen so many worried, tense people in all my life. That's I wouldn't be surprised if the whole whole police department, their wives, everybody's here. This condition is very poor. Yes. Poor Andy. He's, he's so vital and such a capable man. Always seems to run around with that bravado and strength. I, then in just a moment, there he was at the wrong place at the wrong time. I, I, Look, we can't do anything but hope and wait. I'm very fond of that, I am. Look, let, let's talk about something happy, huh? Uh, let's talk about you and me. Here, I, I can make you laugh. You're too much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> come on. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> Want to come over tonight? Sit around and talk a little bit? I've been thinking. You do have a very, very nice house, very comfortable and everything, but your house has an element, or doesn't have an element that, that mine does. And you know what that it is? It's privacy. Total and complete. Right on the nose, you're right, yes. <laughs> also, at my house, I have a chicken supreme, mm -hmm. a very nice bottle of chilled wine, oh. and the salad is waiting for your inimitable style of tossing. Well, one question. What? What, um, what are we going to do with all that privacy? Well, I told you. You're going to toss the salad. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. oh. I, I should have 
not for it. Listen, I'll wait out here when you're ready to talk. Oh, don't be silly. Well, yeah. don't leave on my account. Listen, I have a lot of things to do at home, okay? Oh, so pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Obviously, my father thinks so. Well, I'll be
You can barely see. Well, I guess we'll just have to get another one. Badge number 1255. You know, I don't think I knew that. Or if I knew it, I forgot it. Why did I forget something like that? Is that I just haven't been paying attention? I bet there's not a policeman's wife in this town who doesn't know what number her husband's badge is. Sweetheart. Damn. What's wrong with me? Well, I guess we'll just have to push the No, way. no. Code blue, operating room eight. 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 my wife is once we start all over after Richard Abbott's dead. Uh, well, well, then think of yourself. They're going to come here and they're going to catch you. Yes, they caught me for shooting that cop in land. Yeah? Ain't like that. <laughs> Is that what you come here for? 
You mean to tell me that you come in here worrying about a dinner date with Jack Scott when he's in an operating room struggling to keep my husband alive? Who the hell do you think you are parading yourself around this hospital while people are dying? You get out of my sight. Do you hear me? You get out of here. You get out of here before I throw you out myself. <laughs>
Well, that sounds great. And much, much uh, simpler. <laughs> Good. Well, then uh, I'll expect you at Landfair around 8 o'clock. Okay, fine. Okay, okay. see that. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.